Welcome to the Crazy Hat Chemist. So here we go. Equilibrium and reaction rates. And we're doing uh, video number 10. So here we go. Bam! So look at this equilibrium expression equation very carefully. I want you to look at the uh, states of matter. I want you to look at that delta H. I want you to look at the formulas. I want you to look at the stoichiometric coefficients. Okay, so it is an equilibrium because you see that double-headed arrow over there. So this is some generic practice on this because those are non-existent formulas. So the first thing we're going to answer here is what is the KEQ? Now remember, the KEQ is the products divided by the reactants with the stoichiometric coefficients as exponents. But what's not included? That's right. Solids and liquids are not included. So look at the solids and liquids, cross them out, and then products over reactants with the stoichiometric coefficients as exponents. So here it is. There is the KEQ. Products over reactants, stoichiometric coefficients as exponents. Solids and liquids are not included. Okay, so let's keep on going. So what does this mean? So that delta H is change in enthalpy, and it's 5 kilojoules. So what this number tells you is, is this reaction endo or exothermic? The, and it doesn't matter what the number is. It could be 0.5, it could be 5, it could be 2 billion. The number itself doesn't matter. But the sign in front of the, ma the number does matter. So at the beginning of this unit, we did talk about that. And this is a positive sign, so therefore this reaction here is endothermic. So the question is, what does that tell you about that 5 kilojoules? Where do I place the 5 kilojoules in this reaction? It is on the reactant side. So if it's positive, it belongs on the reactant side. If that delta H were negative, it would belong on the product side, but it would still be a plus sign. Okay, so now let's answer some other questions. So what is the shift when you increase X2? So take a look at that equilibrium equation right over there, and we're going to increase the X2. Which way will it shift? Now, so now I have too much X2. I need to get rid of it. So I'm going to shift it to the right to get rid of it. That's why it's a shift to the right. Okay, then decreasing y. So find y in that equilibrium equation there, and we're going to decrease it. Now, I don't have enough y. I need to make more. So I'm going to shift it towards itself to make more. Notice on what side both the x2 and the y are on the double-headed arrow. They're on the reactant side. Okay, so that's a shift to the left. Okay, now we're going to increase z. So find out where Z is on what side. So we're going to increase Z. Now look at the state of matter of Z very carefully. And do you see Z in the KEQ expression? The answer is I do not see Z in the KEQ expression. That means I can add Z. I can subtract Z. It doesn't matter how much I add, how much I um, add, or how much I decrease of it. It doesn't matter. There is no change. Why? Because it's a solid. The same thing will happen with a liquid. Okay? All right. So how about if we increase B? Now B this time is on the product side. So we're going to have a different shift over here. So we have too much B. We're going to shift away from the B. And shifting away from the B is going to the left. Okay. Now we're going to decrease B. So if you decrease B, it's also on the product side. I need to make more of it. How do I make more B? Go towards the products. And that's a shift to the right. Okay. We're going to add some xenon. This is a noble gas, and I did talk about adding xenon and noble gases in the previous lecture, okay? So take a look at that equation. Do you see xenon anywhere in this equation? The answer is no, you do not. Does xenon react with anything in this equation? Uh, no, probably not, because it's a noble gas. So therefore, there's no change. It only increases the total pressure of the system. All right, now the next one, we're going to increase the heat or we're going to increase the temperature. So the question is, where is our temperature term? And that delta H told us where that temperature term was at the positive of that 5 kilojoules told us it was on the reactant side. So I'm going to increase that 5 kilojoules and I'll need to get rid of it. And that is a shift to the right. Hopefully that worked for you too. Now we're going to decrease the pressure. Now, on the previous 
lecture, you want to review the previous lecture because I do talk about pressure volume relationships dealing with equilibrium problems. So if I decrease the pressure, the question is what happens to the volume? So remember, pressure and volume are an inverse relationship. So if you decrease the pressure, then you increase the volume. Okay. Now, you do whatever the volume does, but in terms of moles of gas. So if the volume is going up, then I'm going to shift to the side with the greater number of moles of gas. So on the reactant side, how many moles of gas do you see? So first of all, I got to figure out what is the gas, and the gas is the X2. Okay, And I don't have any other gas on the reactant side. So And I have a two stoichiometric coefficient in front of the X2. So now I have two moles of gas on the reacting side. Now I want you to look at the products. I got a liquid and I got aqueous. I have zero moles of gas on the product side. So I'm going to shift to the side with the greatest number of moles of gas. Moles of gas only. And that moles of gas is two on the reactant side, zero on the product side. Greater number of moles of gas is on the reacting side. That is a shift to the left. Hopefully that worked for you. Okay, what happens if you were to add a catalyst? So in chemistry, catalysts are nonspecific. They increase both the forward and the reverse rate. They just make the reaction happen faster, but they don't cause a shift either right or left. They make the forward and reverse reaction happen faster, like I said. Okay, so there is no change. Okay. And then, let's pretend that we plugged in some values here for these numbers in the KEQ expression, and then we obtained the number of the KEQ, and the number was 3.2 times 10 to the negative 3. So, from this value, is this reactant or product favored? So, the question is, is it greater than 1, less than 1, or equal to 1? If it were equal to 1, we know we're at equilibrium. But if the KEQ is less than 1, then we do know that it is reactant favored. Okay, all right. So, um, hopefully that video worked really well for you. Give me a thumbs up. Don't be a turkey. Give me a thumbs up. And subscribe.